Hello, everyone. Welcome to another season of SASA's Archeo Gaming Live. This summer, we're featuring SASA gamer Julie Levy with special guests each week. They will be playing through the two Legend of Zelda games, Breath of the Wild and the newest game, mm. Tears of the Kingdom. What is SASA? SASA stands for Safe Ancient Studies Alliance. It is their mission to reverse the current downward trend in the study of the ancient world by engaging the public and bringing together students and scholars to share their passion for the study of the ancient world in order to inspire a vast new generation of students. We do this in many ways, like these live streams, other live streams like book clubs and master classes. We have private reading groups going on over the summer, so RSVP at our events page. We also do research on the downward trend, have a virtual conference in July, have an open access database that is searchable, and much more. Where to find SASA? You can search Save Ancient Studies Alliance. We mainly post on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We stream on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch, and we have a TikTok account. Archeo Gaming streams are only streamed on Twitch, but will be saved on YouTube later. Some protocol for the event, please be kind and respectful. Listen and ask thoughtful questions throughout the event. Please be patient with technology and those administering it. We try very hard to be organized, but inevitably there are some blips. Um, these, again, live events are streamed on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and will be saved on those platforms. Archeo Gaming is only streamed on Twitch. And of course, there are spoiler alerts for these games. Uh, you can subscribe on Twitch. You can enjoy SASA's live events such as Archeo Gaming book clubs, reading groups. Please consider to support SASA with a recurring monthly donation. For as little as $3 a month, you can help us save ancient studies. You can also subscribe on Twitch for free through your Amazon account. And with that, thank you for joining us and have fun. All right. Hello and welcome back to SASA's Archeo Gaming Livestream. I'm Julie Levy, SASA's Program Coordinator and uh, this summer's tour guide through the ancient studies content of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. And this is David Serrano Lozano. Would you like to introduce yourself, David? Sure. Thank you so much, Julie. And hello, everyone. Um, I am just uh, one of the little Padawans following Julie's work here, but um, I am also a fresh PhD in ancient history, especially um, uh, ancient Roman epigraphy. But sometimes I try to pry into video games and classical reception in video games, and that's why Julie was gentle enough to invite me here today. And it's just a pleasure. Thank you so much, Julie. I thank you so much. You're the one who got me into streaming, honestly. Um, it was your presentation on the Forgotten City that started me doing my own Archeo Gaming live streams, because I saw that game and I'm like, I can't not. And I was I was babbling about it to a, a close friend, and and he's just like, you should stream that. And I was like, I could. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that makes me feel so proud. <laughs> Thank you so much. So. So here we are in Zora's Domain. Um, David, have you played Zelda before? I mean, not this one necessarily, but Zelda in general. Oh, well, being a very, very young pre-teenager as I am, my last Zelda game was in a Game Boy. So oh, this nicely. So I think that yeah. was before the introduction of the Zora, maybe? Oh, yeah, quite so. I, I discovered the most of characters and scenarios here literally through the streamings. But um, yeah, um, let's say that Ocarina was my last uh, my last contact with Zelda. Well, that's supposed to be a very good one. I haven't played most of the older ones myself. Um, Ooh, really recommendable. Mm. Things have changed. <laughs> yeah, quite so. So uh, I just wanted to show off this guy who is interested in these stone monuments, which are inscribed. Um, and decorated, and they are found all over the, uh, all over Zora's domain. So, I really appreciate the gift of epigraphy for the first minute. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, you know it's my favorite after watching me play Heaven's Vault. Oh yeah. Well, it's it's kind of an Italic style of uh, hand, well, stone writing. Yeah. So, um, let's see if I can... Whoa. There we go. So you can oh, kind of see it. 
it's very hard to make out. Because um, wow. there are two alphabets in this game, and they are alphabets. They're ciphers for, for Roman letters. Um, mm -hmm. uh, ciphers for English, in, in particular. Um, I don't know which one this is, if it's actually either. This might be very italicized Hylian. I can't make it out. But the other one is, is ancient. I guess Sheikah. Mm -hmm. um, so... So like we have this this writing here, and then we have these these very intricate designs, um, which I wouldn't even begin to to guess what they represent. But I like that when you look at the stone. Check that out. It actually gives you the lacunae. So a lacuna Ooh. is is a, a any sort of gap. In, in an inscription or, or a scrap of papyrus where we can't tell what it says. Um, so we actually have here, like it, they dash out the lacunae for us. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, maybe some epigraphies is, uh, is, is speaking in the developers. That would be neat. Wow. Oh, can you imagine? Oh, um, and is it possible to complete it, or you are just supposed to interpret it out? You of can, the you can interpret it. Um, so, so I'll do that again, so so we can kind of look through it. So, so you can, since you know that it's English, uh, you can figure out that it's one dash per missing letter, which you can't always <laughs> tell in real epigraphy, uh, because not all letters have equal size. <laughs> Um, but you can you can sort of work it out that it's history of the Zora Part Seven, the hero who defeated the Lionel, as told by King Dorfon. Um, there was a time when the people of the land were threatened by the dread beast Lionel, who lived on Ploimus Mountain. But one Hylian drove the beast back and restored peace to the domain. The Zora Helm. Uh, one in this fight is now north of blank in the ruins near a four-letter lake. And so that's supposed to be a clue for you of which lake it is, because you look on your map and you can see this Toto Lake here, and it has mm -hmm. some ruins in it. Now there are other four-letter lakes around here. Um, I can't remember where they are, but it, it, suffice to say, it was in Toto's Lake. Um, but but there there are other four four-letter lakes around here, but they don't have ruins. So that's how you're supposed to find out where the Zora Helm is. And as for the Zora Helm, here's Link dressed up as a Zora. I love this. <laughs> look at it. It's it's meant to make a Hylian look like a Zora with like the whole fish head thing and the, Ooh, the like the pauldrons and the the arm flappies. I love it. <laughs> if he was alone, could be epic. But next to the guy, is very tender. <laughs> um. I really like the design of this scenario. Yeah, the Zora Zora's domain is really gorgeous, just in general. Like, they're they're a long-lived race, um, in particular, and so like you get you get information like that they these lamps are made with luminous stone, because like this guy will trade you luminous stone for diamonds, and like who knows how they adapt. For this shine, I mean, look at it. It's gorgeous, but they do it to all of the the surrounding cliffs too. Like, I don't know, I, I don't know that you can see it very well right now, but like, yeah, yeah it's okay. But like, they aren't just normal cliffs; they're all shiny and stuff. And it's like, wow, y'all live forever, and so you are basically elves. <laughs> Water elves. My thoughts exactly. Yeah. They don't live forever, but like King Dorophon is like three hundred years old or something. Time enough to finish a PhD. <laughs> hey, maybe even maybe even a postdoc. Oh, let's not get ambitious. 
Um, let's see. It's true. It's, what else? It's hard not to see these elvish vibes when you see these long life civilizations. This is stylish and, yeah. and very elliptic design. Yeah. Yeah, and they're they're really fond of of silver, mm. and uh, and sweeping lines, very curved, very very unnatural nature, right? Like yeah. solid water and running silver and glowing yeah, like rocks. Like being getting in hold and control of nature on your on your own. And like, I just, I, I think I mentioned this in a previous stream, but I just love the central fish. Like, look <laughs> at that thing. The throne fish. Um, it's like shaped fairly similarly to some, some roof charms that you find on, uh, on Japanese temples and, and palaces. Yeah, the, the decorative ones, right, on the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So. Where should we go? And what I really want to do today is uh, is the castle. So we're we're gonna let's see. We're gonna get dangerous. Oh, good. We've talked a bit before about like how Western the Hylians are. Like they're mm -hmm. very. I don't know. They're very Western European. They have like the the great stonework chapels and the um, yeah the like, like European medieval broadswords and stuff like that. But the castle is no exception. <laughs> it's quite interesting because you can have transgalactic technology, but still you need a castle to protect yourself. So quite ironic. Not that it did much protecting. <laughs> You know, I, I have been a, a fan of, of sandboxes and open worlds forever, and I really like the, what this game is doing with landscaping. I mean, it's not like there is no great landscaping in the last years, but this one in particular is like, the, for real, the place and the environment is like another character. Well, quite a little character. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, <laughs> you know, nobody quite does it like Nintendo when they really decide to do a thing. Um, just because they are willing to say we're not putting this out until we're done. Um, like one of one of the the really amazing things is like this game came out in what was it two thousand fourteen? Was it that long? Well, oh no no, that's more recent than that, but not by much. Like it's it's definitely you know it's been some years. It's been around. 2017. 2017. Wow. Yes. It was like I said 14, and I'm like, no, that's not right. But it was certainly older than 2019, which even that is like you look at this and you're like, there are games that came out last year that don't look this good, that don't have this sense of balanced landscape. Because basically yeah, everywhere you go in this game, there is something for you to find, even if it's just a little mushroom. And, and there is this feeling of real landscape because many times you know, have this this feeling of um, you know uh, uh, filling up the bubble just for having another place to do it, more or less the same thing. But here you really have a sense that each area or each zone has a kind of a personality, mm -hmm. which is something I really appreciate. Actually, I cannot remember that one of the first streamings uh, we, we we were discussing with, uh, I think it was Jordi, about ruins, and it was quite amazing to me to see that the ruins were coherent. Yeah. Like, they have really taken care about the place. Yeah, that was one of the things um, that I, you know, I, I did go find the Zora helm in between streams, um, but, like, that, that little ruin up there in Ruto Lake that is right near Zora's domain is a very clearly Hylian constructed. Like you, there's no mistaking it. It's got the stonework and the, and the like, and it's, it's completely disused. And it's like, yeah, the Hylians would want to have a presence right here next to Zora's domain, wouldn't they? 
What? What? Why did that happen? Oh, because we get a cutscene, that's why. Ah, okay. It's like, I had plenty of stamina left. Why did I drown? No, I didn't drown. It's just cutscene time. Behold, Calamity Ganon, the giant pig. Wow. And Zelda, the light that keeps him in check. Um, so, so on my first stream, my, my friend Dan, um, I, I termed some, something of a Zelda archaeologist, just in terms of, like, he knows the history very, very well. Um, where am I? Oh, I'm over there. Um, the history of the Zelda franchise. And one thing that he's told me is that all throughout the series, when, when the the big bad, the power person, is a person, uh, a man, he's Ganondorf. And when he is more abstract or more pig-like, he's Ganon. Whoa. So, so here we have Calamity Ganon, and I do know just from the trailers for Tears of the Kingdom that we do get Ganondorf as a person. That's yeah. I, I think that the, the name of uh, Zelda archaeologist is worth because my goodness, get into that level of accuracy. Wow. I'm sorry. I am just taking a look to the to the blueprint and yeah. it's interesting because let's let's take take a look at this. So this is the the map of the castle <laughs> from the outside, and if we go inside, we'll get a map of the inside. Uh, but this is the castle grounds. You can see. The two gate houses, like there's the front gate down there, and the road going up, and there's one gate house, and then a second, and then it goes around and into the heart of the castle, which is where mm -hmm. Ganon is. That bright orange dot is Ganon. We're not going to go do the final fight today. Um, okay. Because Hello. I'm way more interested in the ruins <laughs> of the castle. <laughs> so, so, like, this castle is really quite large. Uh, blueprint map reminds me of the one in Jedi Fallen Order and Survivor. Is it as difficult to navigate? I haven't played those games. Uh, well, I, st I started trying to play. Uh, no, that was Knights of the Old Republic. I don't know. I've never gotten into those games. I'm, I'm actually not a Star Wars person. Weird as that seems. Um, you go ahead and cancel me now. <laughs> uh, but I, I actually don't find this too difficult to navigate. Um, particularly once you get inside, the map is very, very helpful. Um, so let's, let's actually go inside. Where do we want to go? There is, so all of those little archways, uh, the orange archways are, are ways into the castle proper. So there is one just over here somewhere. This area I... is very dangerous, as you can see. It has a lot of desiccated guardians just sitting around. So are you more into stealth or into let's break it down? Oh, I'm I'm a stealth person. I gotta mm -hmm. wear my sneaky suit just about everywhere. I have the Zora armor on because I wanted to go up that waterfall, but... Uh, whoop, hello. Let's not get blown up. Preferably. Let's put the stuff I'm quite with Alex there. That especially Jedi Fallen, Fallen Order was really hard to navigate. I still remember it. That's, that's something that I really appreciate when a blueprint or uh, just the map is not making things more difficult than the scenario is already is, you know. can't shoot me, but I can shoot you. <laughs> What's the thing to the left? The kind of alien-ish tower? So those are 
part of the Calamity Ganon. They don't actually hurt you if you touch them, but they are definitely bad. Um, you can't climb them. They're kind of like the shrines in that way. But it's... It's pretty fascinating that they have them at all. Um, they seem to be some part of Ganon's attack on the castle. Okay, so where am I in relation to that gate now? Ah, I'm gonna have to kill it to get in there. Okay. Now passion begins. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Don't do that. Alright, so I'm in. I'm inside the castle, and you can see that the map at the bottom has changed. So you can just see the yeah. inner parts of the castle. And now the gates are white. Um, and my little dude is that yellow arrow. So I am here in the bowels of the castle. But you can see how extensive the castle complex really is. Um, so the... The main building is way up there, but the parts you can navigate, so um, I think we're in a, a mining passage here, like a quarry. Oops, I don't want to do that. Yeah. You get these, uh, Goron technology. These mining carts. Nope, that's not what I wanted you to do. Sometimes I hit the wrong button because I had a different control scheme in previous playthroughs. Sometimes when I game I, play, I push the right button, so... Oh, that's it. Beautiful, moment, uh, beautiful homage to Indiana Jones. <laughs> Alright, alright, I'll kill you. That's fine. Okay. Stupid keys. They have one hit point. Hit them with anything and they're dead. Um, the same cannot be said for what I think we have back here. Where are you? Huh. Where is... Are you... It's supposed to be an entrance or so? Yeah. Or is it just the curve? Oh, no, there is an entrance, I just... I don't you have quite to remember how you get to it. It seemed that you were pointing in the right direction. Maybe you have to crumble down the wall or something like that? I'm guessing here. Um... There we are. Ah, That's what okay. I had, thought I had to face. So, I'm gonna take out a bigger weapon. We're gonna go kill something big. Hello. Oh! <laughs> there was a tiny talus on top of the big talus. That's so cute. <laughs> um, I mean, it's cute until the talus smacks me. Yeah. A little stony. <laughs> ah, got back up too fast. You saw nothing. Uh, good thing I had that Mifa's Grace handy. Uh, that's something I didn't grab on stream. But there is a power that gives you an automatic full heal once every once in a while, basically. Mm. Okay. It's interesting how golems will always be golems. 
it doesn't matter what kind of game you're playing, but they're always handy if you need to make a middle level or low level bad guy to spend some not so long fighting. It's interesting. That's worth my study. I mean, the Taluses are... They're not super low level. They're pretty... Oh, I didn't have a picture of this type. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Link. You love climbing. Climb the rock. Tradition established by Assassin's Creed. When you really need to climb something, they jump. I don't have that power again, so I better eat something. Good thing in Zelda you're allowed to eat, like, while flying, uh, in the middle of battle. Just like you can change clothes, you know, whenever. Totally realistic. Hey, eating in the middle of the battle, the secret of every superhero. Is food. Mm. Crazy thing is that that's not so inaccurate. I mean, it's, it's wild how to hear how, especially in, in ah. contemporary world, some veterans are eating in the middle of even because you know, quarrel and even engagement with enemies. That tells you a lot. Well, why are you doing that? I told you to hit it. I'm sorry that we're spending so long looking up a golem's butt. That was not my intent when I started this fight. You really have a great title for this streaming. <laughs> All right, we got it. There you go. And now that we've gotten rid of the golem, there's an updraft here that we can use. A reward for a well done job. To fly oh, okay. into the next section of the out. castle, which is why I was fighting it. <laughs> so you were saying that basically when we say castle is castle is like medieval ish style and so on? Yeah. Inside? So. Mm -hmm. So here we are. This is the library. And oh. this is one of my favorite places in the whole game. I mean, look at this thing. This huge ass wow. library. It's got the like medieval arms, the like crossed glaives over banners with the Hyrulean su symbol, um, study tables with the you know the books laid out of all kinds. You unfortunately can't really read them. That would be amazing. Possible. There are a couple of books you can read. I'm going to see if I can find one. Uh, but they're they're on these uh, these lecterns, which I love. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, well, it's a nice scenario. Though, this something I noticed um, playing um, Heaven's Ball down in a previous game that I'm struggling to remember the detail, but I can't. But, uh, if, you know, the, the trope of the monster in the library, which is so rich and enticing, but um, it's always holding my attention how little bookshelves are in the libraries in video games. It's like you have those ones that you need uh, straightforwardly and a couple of them for the background, but it's like uh, libraries have clearly discovered ebooks in, in video games. Uh, this one actually seems pretty full to me. I mean, not like hugely, but it, it like for a medieval library, it's a pretty good amount of books. Um, so like here we have the castle's cookbook, uh, which I, <laughs> which is great. Um, so so we can learn how to make fruit cake. Uh, which one of one of there is actually a quest to make a fruit cake 
for somebody he wants to know but like look at all this that's actually a good amount of books like you have yeah, several that's, that's walls like and two floors it was calling my attention because this one is like stored yeah And, and you can kind of see that that same aesthetic here that you see in the ruins, right? Like you have you have the the stonework, the like the very even mortared gray stone, but then you also have these lovely carved column heads with floral patterns, and the tiles here. I really like the tiles. Um, like they went out of their way to get two different colors of gray for the royal library floor. And I like the detail of. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say, like, the roofing, too. Like, you can see that it was, like, either a cloth or a painted roofing with, like, these carved column heads and stuff. I just, I think it's so cool. But what were you saying? Uh, yeah, it's a, I like the detail of these arcs that seem to be blinded windows in, in the floor below because it's like giving it some kind of realistic architectural evolution to the building as it was growing on itself. Those details are really neat by designers. You know, to your back, I think. Oh, like these? These, like, um, cabinet I... bookshelves? Um, oh, those two. So, so yeah. interestingly... In terms of windows, this would be a pretty dark library. Um, yeah. But there are lots of lamps, and fortunately for us, lots of holes in the roof. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I guess I need to deal with this guy, huh? He's like, what? Like we can see the the concrete inside the walls here, which I kind of love. Yeah. And I'm that's also that's I'm also very fond of the oops, the the two types of music that you get for the inside and the outside of the castle. Like these are one of some of the only places you actually get the traditional Zelda theme. Mm -hmm. And creating an inner env inner environment just by the music. That's a great point. And I, that's why I'm mentioning, there is a lot of architectural and building coherence in the designs in this game. It's like, it's such an attention to detail. Maybe yeah. it's... I, I'm not, no, maybe it's just the kind of thing that you only pay attention to when you are really analyzing a game and so, but I really believe that that accumulation of detail is part of that famous, uh, you know, realism or that famous uh, credibility when designing historical settings. Like, the more you accumulate, the more unconsciously we are feeling like in a real place not simply a you know self-created setup i love this book because you can actually see you can see the hylian um mm -hmm. if you look close but you can also see the little illustration with the knife <laughs> oh, see, to the right. it's so Ooh. cute and and of course this is for for monster cake which implies that the chancellor was Yeah, I don't it, think it, it, most it, medieval it, castles just have like treasure lying around though <laughs> <laughs> mostly that's been taken yeah, exactly not anymore ruby in it. But, yeah it's true I was thinking about this uh, half preserved cathedral so typically in the Scottish uh, villages and towns that uh, have just the structure but not the roof that gives that, that feeling in the library yeah yeah, I want to come up on this uh, this wall here just to show you 
<laughs> so, like, we have these entrances to the wall. So we have these little guard houses on the wall, like at the base of Ooh. the wall. And then they let you come up out onto the curtain wall to guard the castle. And it's just so, it's so much for this game, right? Like this game has so many things in it, but it has just these, these decorative iron spikes and, and like curtain walls and all this stuff that you could easily have made this game without. I mean, all those elements that you are saying, tying up on the fact that then you turn around and there is this landscape always there in contrast. It's like, I mean, six year old and this game has an age a day, if you ask me. Yeah, it's very cool. Um. <laughs> so let's see. And then you have just like clear evidence of the remnants of the fight, right? Like, it's just a sword hanging out in the castle. Uh, where do I... where am I going next? What battle was here? Yeah. Okay. So here we have... Okay, that was... that was our library entrance, so this is the next place. In my total lack of knowledge about the, the history here in, in this world, this castle is in ruins because of time, because of uh, battle it's, and abandonment? So there was a, a huge battle here a hundred years ago, and it's been abandoned ever since, and left to the Calamity. Mm -hmm. So um, those, those evil machines you saw earlier, they swarmed the castle, along with the, the like, swirling swine. <laughs> and... Uh, <coughs> That, that's no not way my. To beat that's that. not my words. That's uh, actually one of the game characters calls him that. Um, but yeah, so this is a battle, and then a hundred mm -hmm. years it's been left to the monsters, and like you even get to see like the remnants of paintings that hung on the wall that have, you know, clearly something breathed fire right in the center of it. Exactly. Probably it's this thing like right here. That you are about to attend. <laughs> so long, sucker. Ooh, it had bomb arrows. <laughs> that would have uh, messed me up pretty good. What don't I need? I don't need most of these things, but that in particular is not as good. So then we have like these great hallways that are clearly oh, wow. like they used to be full of art and they're just in, in utter disrepair and there are monsters hanging out like this guy I like it because it's, they are really good transmitting with this design the, the this effect of something that clearly is abandoned and ruined but it's transmitting the old glory like the how it, how yeah. amazing it should have been yeah yeah like you can like really feel the grandeur of it here Exactly. This, I think... Oh, yeah. This is the dining room. This Ooh. is so interesting. Oh, no, this isn't the dining room. Where am I? It's one of the armories. Uh, I'm in the tower with one horn. Ooh, I haven't seen any of these yet. Royal Claymore. Ooh, Beautiful. that's a great name. It's a whole set of... As an Outlander lover, I love the name of that sword. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's their general name for two-handed sword in this game. Um, which, you know, I have some feelings about, but... <laughs> Some of them do seem to be claymores. Like, look at this rusty claymore. Like that. That is, in fact, a claymore. Yeah. It's as tall as Link. Um, but, but they also just have like they have 
the Royal set and then the Royal Guard set. And... What else have we got? Nothing... Nothing... Uh, not really nothing, just like... I don't need them. Um... This looks suspicious. Too quiet to be good. I'll bet there's a Korok hiding in it. I love how you can just casually light shit on fire in this game. Yeah, it'll sure. never spread to the walls. Nope, no Koroks, but baked apples. And a roasted acorn. I mean, they're only baked and roasted because I set it on fire. But... And the never ending Zelda tradition of messing around with boxes forever. Oh, and here's, here's a nice conceit. The broken stairway, right? Like, that's totally a thing you would do if you were fighting in here, is break the stairway so that people couldn't chase you up it. Uh, fortunately, Link is a mountain climber, I guess? <laughs> he can climb almost anything in this game. 25% spider. <laughs> he was bitten by a, a radioactive keys. <laughs> I was thinking that it's it's quite amazing how video games have evolved in in a matter of two decades because uh, ruins or something destructed or uh, yeah uh, uh, an abandoned place essentially was a standard design copied and pasted all around and nowadays just some, through something like ruins you can see how accurate and how you know customized for each and every context and history and a scenario like this castle is it's a battle and so it has destruction but it's also abandoned. So it has the cracks and the, it's like the, the level of detail and richness that games have reached in these last 20 years is amazing. Yeah. And another really good Sorry. thing about the style of this game, um, and like Nintendo has played with this in, in the Zelda series a couple of times, is, you know, there is a, a not exactly cartoony, but very, like, not trying to be realistic stylized element mm -hmm. to the design and i think the I reason for that is because they discovered when they tried to do gritty realism back with twilight princess that it just ages terribly whereas you know wind waker still looks fresh and that thing is cartoony as heck uh, that's it's the nation of uncanny valley you know yeah. the 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 Whatever you say, it's, that's the same reason why Ghibli will never die. Right. The farther you get from reality. They're so classic. Mm -hmm. Gotta go fight And if you ask me, I mean, at the end of the day, there is a kind of a strange pretension to try to make aesthetics hyper realistic and then you insert one horn monsters and so on. I mean, if yeah, you are playing the like fantasy. Why, why bother? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. And let's be consistent. It's, it's fantasy, so let's be fantastic. Let's not try to be realistic on the one hand and, you know, fantastic in the other. Shiny sword. Stop focusing on the treasure chest. I'll get there in a minute. Hey, take that one. You will be the Queen of England. Uh, you know, if only, right? Like, <laughs> if I were Queen of England, a lot of things would change. Uh, first of all, I would... Well, I'd do a bunch of stuff before I abolished the monarchy, but it wouldn't last long. Um... <laughs> if, as Queen of England, my first decision is to abolish monarchy, so goodbye. <laughs> yeah. First, first decision is, we are no longer Turf Island. You just get that through your thick skulls. Trans people are people. And then we can talk abolishing the monarchy. If I may, let's start talking about your driving thing. <laughs> okay, here's where I thought we were. This is yeah. the dining hall. And look <laughs> at it. It's so clearly, like, it's still a dining hall, but it's been taken over by monsters. And so it's... Just like random, like straight up, just 
ingredients sitting around on the remnants of rugs and tablecloths and like just a, just a whole raw bird a whole raw chicken just sitting there in the open it's like yeah it's, you see the destruction you kind of guess the original use but you also see the reuse all in one design yeah wow. and like we just have like a bear skin here Mm -hmm. Just like a piece of salt and some some meat and some fruit and like a bit of a different monster altogether. <laughs> like I love it. And they're just um, normally by now they'd be attacking me, but I have stupid amounts of stealth. Yeah, I see. They were just chilling. But like this is clearly where monsters chill. Where they come to to hang out and eat, and it it looks like a ruined banquet hall with these banners up and look at these chandeliers. And it's, I mean, obviously the the medieval reference is yeah, needless to say. But is there anything that is making it? Alien, as you said, aliens are remarkably uh, Western Middle Age. So, is there anything telling you finally, telling you finally, this is not human, or basically they play in this Middle Age game all along? Um, I mean, I I think the Hylians are pretty. Like, they're they're pretty much human. Um, mm -hmm. What don't I care about? The shield. Sorry, what did you say? The shield? Yeah, sorry, I, I like the shield. It's a cool design. Oh, the one I'm wearing. It's the Korok yeah. shield. Um, yeah, I guess I guess there aren't Koroks in uh, in the early Zelda games either. No, not gonna ring any bell. A late game thing. So basically, they're the Deku's tree's offspring. <laughs> Just like weird little forest critters. That's a fact. That was gonna happen. Eh. A day in the office, yeah. <laughs> Perhaps I should not let that happen again. The guy was just having his coffee. Just having his. Raw meat diet. <laughs> Gourmet. Oh, but look at look at this couch. <laughs> look at, like I can't oh, wow. I can't stand how cool it is. And like mm. after a hundred years, yeah, it probably would still be pretty okay, but just dusty. And you can see that it's like it's got dust on the edges and stuff. And it's like what? Like these little chairs. I mean, Link can't sit in them for reasons, but you know, I don't know. I I just yeah. love everything. It's so ridiculous. Oh hey, there's a bow up there. But I get you, yeah, and, and the feeling of place that these things give, not simply a, you know, a polygonal place decorated with some things to pretend to be. No, it's like a, a sensation of a used and functional by its own history. Yeah. That's so neat. Let's not rule out the possibility that those couches were put there by the monsters. <laughs> they just wanted. To... <laughs> they just, you know, were having were having a, a rough day standing and decided they wanted I... to sit. I need a place to put my feet on, please. <laughs> oh, sorry, cat moment. Kitty, hello. Yeah, yeah. it's an attention. <gasps> well, which? Hi, oh. I love you, Kitty. My kitty is also chilling with us. I'll show her off. Hey, baby. Yeah. Two hours with no attention? Impossible. <laughs> so. so where are we heading to? Um, so right now I'm just kind of running around the rest of the inside of the castle. Um, I don't have a particular destination in mind. Uh, is there anything you would like to see? Anything from like prior Zelda games that interests you, or are you curious about anything from from uh, having watched my prior streams? 
I must confess that I have come with very touristic approach because I'm following the guide, but I must confess that as many settings and scenarios we can see, I will be the happier because I am really astonished still by the, the designs of spaces and landscapes in this game, repeating myself, but it's, it's quite interesting, it's quite remarkable. It's, okay. I have to get really, really close in time, like something like, uh, I don't know, um, yeah, maybe Assassin's Creed to be not original or um, uh, Forbidden West to think about places that have such a personality in the designs as this game. Yeah. Um, well, let's let's go hang out in some of the other civilizations main areas. Well, uh, first, when I, when you, whenever you leave the castle, it drops you right here at the edge of what used to be Castle Town, and is now absolutely crawling with with guardians and like evil walker e evil water and and like oh, that's a good picture so like this used to be a grand green forested entrance to the castle and now it is a an ashy wasteland filled with these like vile machines and poisoned water that will hurt you if you touch it so talk about oh. a sense of a sense of place and a sense of loss i mean look at the central fountain even like that you had had to be gorgeous once upon a time right exactly um, yes but i'm not gonna run through castle town because i will probably get killed by guardians <laughs> so <laughs> fair um, enough but I would like to show you the the Gerudo because I want to get your reaction to how they are portrayed. It's very, very different. Okay. Um, I like the portrayal mostly, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> okay, You're always going to get some trouble when you have a race of all women. Uh, yeah, especially certain audiences have troubles with those. There's that. Um, there's also like you'll get people who tell you that there that there is no misogyny in Japan, which. Um, but like the most the most important incorrect part of that is that it's just different misogyny. So like there's no trouble. The Japanese have no trouble portraying female warriors. Like mm -hmm. these 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 Gerudo are pretty Amazonian in that respect. And honestly, I kind of love them. I mean, look at these people. They are they are buff. They are badass. They're tall. They're you know, just they're they have a, a wide range really of like skin tones and body types. Um, although they do all have the giant nose that is a bit of an anti Semitic thing. But like look, this person has a completely different body type. And yeah. Ooh. That that's unusual in video games to yeah. respect the variations of bodies. Oh, and and like I, I wanted to show off some of the skin tones, but I don't actually know where any of the lighter skin tone people are offhand. But there are there are a bunch of people with like white-ish skin tones all the way down to like dark black, and like this person has a reddish skin tone. Um, so like that's really nice. But all of them wear these ridiculous high heels. <laughs> I was thinking about that exactly right now. I mean, a race of warriors in high heels. They all wear <laughs> high heels, and I don't know if uh, I don't know if we'll get to see it. But their running animation is the worst. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> like it's not bad animation. It's just oh, you you went for the most stereotypically girly run you could come up with. Oh, yeah. Um, Let's see. But, but I did want to just talk about the the design of this place because it's got a very. I mean, it is very deserty. It's very Middle Eastern, but it also has like some some interesting flair, like the the mosaic stonework that you get on like the the gates yeah. and stuff. Is really unusual. Because it's not because it's all abstract, and like I would have expected it to be 
either figurative or all the way up the walls, you know? Mm -hmm. But you do get this almost adobe look where they have the, you know, like these are clearly made out of some kind of plaster or mud and they have wooden wooden struts and things embedded in them and then they have tile work and they have these aquifers all through the city. It's, it's kind of a design that is respecting some kind of functionality because it's like some material is for water to be kept and contained and then the other one is not necessary so it's like they design with this logic. I like it. And you're not and, the only um, person who climbs around. This is Tracy, mm -hmm. Hyrule's greatest gossip. She writes a. <laughs> she writes. She's basically a, a magazine journalist. Mm -hmm. Oh, that brings me back memory of Mass Effect. The most popular news publication, the Rumor Mill. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's better than some real newspaper's name. Um, I have a, a YouTuber friend who part of part of her bit is that she so she will like say that she's the the news correspondent for the Daily Telegraph. <laughs> <laughs> this is a clearly like a jab at the Daily Mail and the Telegraph, and I love it. I love it. Oh, uh, now I have a, my own particular whim if I ever get rich. Found that newspaper with that name. <laughs> and then you can pay my friend. That would be, that'd be cool. Hey, no gates closed? Oh, that's a chimney. Okay. Yeah, like, I can I can go in here. And you see the, like, if, you, if you've ever been in, like, a Medina in... Like Morocco or somewhere, this is exactly how they look. Like they yeah. have the, the cloth rooftops and the yeah. the clay buildings. And those holes on the walls. Yeah. And we have a nice little bar here. Oh yeah, and here we have one of the darkest skin tones in the whole town. Like definitely black African skin tone. Mm -hmm. Which I love. And then you get just yes. So, so like you can, you can try to order a drink here, but she won't actually let you take it. Um, Link is apparently too young. How they can tell that when they can't tell you're a boy, I don't know. But good question. And I've been after being in the for so much time. That yeah, details. it's like, did you ever watch Avatar: The Last Airbender? <laughs> oh, not that I am really eager to do it. No. Uh, not not the no. not the movie with the blue people, the cartoon one. Ah, okay. I uh, sorry. I thought you were talking about the movie adaptation with real oh, people. Yeah, no. No, no, no. Uh, no. No, the 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 original cartoon that's actually good. Um mm -hmm. like there's there's one point at which he's like I'm 112 years old and it's like you're 12 years old. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, what is that? Oh. So this is a goddess statue, and every single settlement, every well, every single town, all throughout this game has a goddess statue. Um, it's uh, all all three Hylian villages, or well, hum human villages, because I guess the Sheikah aren't technically Hylian. Um, mm -hmm. They're they're. Japanese humans, apparently, or something, with white hair and longer lives. Um, oh, kind of elvish thing, I get it. Yeah. Um, I was thinking that. that oh, sorry. But yeah, so so. All of all of the human settlements have them. Uh, oh yeah, she has lighter skin, so there's a good example. Yeah. Um. All the human settlements, all of the four races, their main cities have them. So um, there was one in Zoro's Domain, there's one in Rito Village, there's one in Goron City, and there is. Um, uh, what did I miss? Oh, and there's one here. Duh. Um, and then there are, like, Two other types of places that you see them that are 
I mean, they're really all fairly similar places. Um, so what I mean to say is that the other places you find goddess statues are all temples or shrines. Um, and they're, they're not just any shrine, because there are 120 shrines in this game. They're the ones that have a particular association with the, the legend of Zelda, the, the, the Triforce and the, um, and the hero's journey and stuff like that. So, Creating now I'm going to take you to a completely different part of the world. Love Link's little, like, I'm too cold to live. <laughs> Yeah, that's a detail I really like in this game because normally attention to these kind of features like freezing or starving is quite restricted to survivals, and here it's just integrated. Here it's, as, it's as, done as, so well. Um, yeah. and like there are so many, there are so many newer games that don't do nearly as well at um, at making it okay to like have different weather that requires different things. And like, I'm not going to say that it's all perfect. Like, most people will tell you that the real enemy in this game is the rain. Because <laughs> it's the one thing that you get annoyed by that you just cannot do anything about. Because um, you can't climb in the know. rain. Well, you can, but it's really bad. You slip. Um, oh. From my experience living in oh. my city, I tell you that's realistic. <laughs> That's another thing. Oh, go away. I want to deal with you. I want to pay attention to the dragon. I'm not the monster I'm looking for. So much. I think I'm too low down here. Oh no, maybe. Yeah. So, do you hear the music? I love the dragon music. It's like my favorite thing. I'm gonna put on some uh, fireproof clothing for this. <laughs> because of reasons, yeah. such a good job. These are, the dragons are so awe-inspiring. I just really love them. Wow, and so striking, just in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Wow. Can you get on top of it? That is not possible. No, actually, if you touch them, they, uh, they will hurt you. Yeah. Which is a shame. Yeah. But... They have problems to socialize, I see. So we are in a land of dragons, so this is basically abandoned and wasted down. Hmm? Yeah, so this is essentially a great canyon that runs really, like, so this is this canyon here. Mm -hmm. um, so it runs between the coldest part of the world and the rest. And oh, inside see. the canyon, it's very much wastelandy. Um, which is to say, there's life down here, but it's very scrubby. But this is really what I wanted to show you. <laughs> you see this great temple here. So this is... What they call the Forgotten Temple. We'll get the name in a minute. And, like, nobody comes here. And, I mean, I can show you in a minute why nobody comes here. But... But look at this architecture, it's completely different. Yeah. Like, these... These bricks are not the same bricks. These carvings are not the same carvings. Like, look at this... This very linear scroll work. And the... the colossal size of things. 
there are no, you know, Hylian symbols, like with the bird or anything. But, but it is clearly worked all over. It, like, it's from a different age. So it's for aesthetic and style of designs, as you say, very linear. And I like that it's playing a lot with the the linearity and the straight lines, but not like making it cool. It's like art based on a different standard. They really made a hard work in different designs here. Yeah, they really did. And, uh... and if I get it well, the idea is that most of the temple is already buried because of the path of time. So this is the inside of the temple, and mm -hmm. like it's so long abandoned that it has trees growing into it. So that's not just a hundred years. Um, this has been abandoned for a long time, and yet there are all these guardians in it, which are a little bit dangerous. Just a smidge. Have you noticed that? Oh, wow. I thought I was flying too fast for that. But yeah, so, uh, I think this has been abandoned for a very long time indeed. Trees on the walls, yeah. It's curious, the older the ruin, the, older the, ruin, the, the more dangerous. It's like, a uh, kind of dangerous pile up through time. It's kind of a trope in, well, in movies and video games, but it's quite solid. So, so this is part of what I wanted to show you. I thought of this when we were talking about the oh. goddess statues. This is by far the biggest goddess statue. Like, there, there's one other that is in the Temple of Time. But this is a goddess statue like any other, but you can see, like, she has more detail than the average goddess statue. She's got a, a place, a flat place where her hands are holding. It is, it is my theory, <laughs> and I know you haven't played Skyward Sword, but it is my theory that this is actually the goddess statue from, from Skyward Sword, which is supposed to be at the very beginning of the Zelda timeline. So they are playing a kind of uh, uh, reference to something like the prehistoric Venus that are scattered all around because it's a uh, kind of cool that is before any other time or so. I like it. I, think I will explain that they are everywhere in all the cultures. Yeah. Um, I mean, it helps that the gods are real. <laughs> like, you can actually talk to Hylia at her statues. But not everybody can. But, um... Oh, what is sign? Yeah, look at the yeah. look at the folds of the cloth on this on this one. Like it's so much more detailed, and it's so colossal. But you know, like the the guardians, like the like a lot a lot of that stuff is supposed to be ten thousand years old, and this theoretically is like at least a thousand beyond that, <laughs> and it's still this yeah. good, like. The air in here must be dry. <laughs> Although, like, how are there trees growing in it then? So, like, I don't know how this is preserved. Maybe, maybe it's maybe it's the blessing of the goddess. But like, this is the only place in the temple that you see that symbol, right? That that you know the the winged triforce symbol. No, I, I haven't played Tears of the Kingdom yet, but I have seen some glimpses, and I think they're going to get into some of that even more ancient stuff. Mm -hmm. These are just... not just do it, just to start yeah. sneaking it in. I like it. So the idea is that the small statues will be like their reminiscence of this old conception that is half forgotten. Yeah. I like it. These older civilizations. Mm -hmm. And, and like, to come back to, like, how good the open world is here, like, the fact that in this place where you're like, oh my gosh, there's this amazing colossal statue, there's this huge reference to 
Skyward Sword. Um, they've they've put something to find. You can come back here and find a Korok that is actually useful to you. Ooh. I have an Easter egg, or just you know for a plot. Um, I mean, Koroks are useful. They that's how you like if you find Korok seeds, you can get their older brother to expand your inventory slots. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a very silly, very Nintendo thing to do. Oh. Let's see. What? Let's see what this shrine is. If it's a blessing, I'll take it. If not, maybe I'll go somewhere else, because I want to, uh, to give you a look at Goron City. I want to see what you think of that. <laughs> I really enjoyed the tour. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I spent so much time running around uh, between sessions because, like, I wanted to go in the castle in particular, but. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. And, like, the shrines. So, this is supposed to be 10,000 year old architecture. This. Like, this yeah, is, this like is 10,000 year old Sheikah architecture. Um. And, and design, and you can see they have, like, the glowstone lamps. I don't really need another of those. I have one of those. Um, but, like, this is the other alphabet, right? Like, this is, this is oh, yeah. the ancient, or Sheikah alphabet down here. And, and, uh, and the yeah. Easter egg is that if you actually bother, you can, you can transcribe all of it into English, and it just says things like, this is the monk platform, and this way out. <laughs> like, it's just very functional. <laughs> hey, makes sense. The disappointment of translation. <laughs> mm. A very oh, wow. realistic translation set. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, I, I wonder... I really wonder how were the brainstormings in the design process of this game. That's the other good thing about shrines is that you finish them and they refill your health. I like that they have managed in this particular space to try not to make an, any clear reference to any particular human culture because, as you said, there are some niches to some Japanese one, medieval one, but here it's, they, they manage to be neutral, which is not easy. Yeah. Um, so, so the... The linear work reminds me a little bit of oh, actually maybe I should show you that of of what they call the Zonai ruins, which um, is definitely interesting. I don't know where that's going, although I do know it comes back up in Tears of the Kingdom, so something to look forward to next month. Mm -hmm. um, don't stop following stuff, people. Do you think that they will build up some kind of logic and historical connection between different environments and, and spaces and ruins? So, so yeah, check this out. That oh, wow. is extremely Mayan, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You and, see, that's a reference. <laughs> like, and and so like these these ruins, again, they're not perfectly Mayan, but like, I want to see if I can find. Uh, somewhere around here like you can see that we have like much bigger different stonework here from a totally different time and like this mound was probably some kind of I don't know ziggurat perhaps and you get these, there somewhere. these oh hi I don't care about you go away I'm busy Talking about ancient stuff. I'm a touristic guy here. Shut up. <laughs> oh yeah, I think I think this is what I was looking for over here. Is it? No. I mean, this is also cool, but oh here, yeah, here we go. So you also get these like oh like dragon shapes, like they they clearly knew the dragons, right? But here, that has such a, a specific connotation now that you know that the dragons are real. 
Yeah, the real the yeah, the accuracy of the design is telling you a lot of things. It's not yeah. just imagination. Oh. And yeah, I, I I totally with you. It's like each ruin has its own personality in a very marked way. Yeah. It's it's really hard to miss one for the other. Playing the pacifist mode. Uh, there it is. Yeah. Here you go. Okay. So I like how here the ruins are integrated with the with the spaces. Yeah. yeah, and especially how you see that the, the the earth and nature is consuming the ruins, and uh -huh. as you can imagine that in 100 years most of it will be disappeared. Just you see the process. A typical archaeological feeling. And yet these are ancient. They're older than the 10,000 years. <laughs> it's like, uh, maybe. Wow. <laughs> maybe. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take you up to Goron City so you can see this because this is really interesting. Um, like Gorons are pretty old, right? Like, you you're familiar with Gorons? Yeah, um, thanks to you, but yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so yeah. So these are the the rock folk. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They live on the volcano. They have always lived on the volcano, as far as I know. And here is, like, the best Link face. Um, like, I'm gonna change to a, a not fireproof thing so you can see this is Link's <laughs> on fire face. Like, <laughs> um, Either that or the place is smelly, one or both. Um, and then I need to make yeah, sure that I don't have anything wooden. Ah, yeah, my shield's gonna burn. Okay. That's better. So, so welcome to Goron City, um, where we have these, like, very industrial metal bridges, and, like, look at these, look at these pots. I find these pots so fascinating, like, the designs on them. They're very, I don't know, solar- they remind me the kind of pots that you found all around in the old Game Boy Zelda games. They, mm. These were all around and they had this kind of pattern as well. You know, spiky something. Maybe I'm getting vintage here, but they really struck me like that. Yeah, I bet. But like, I also love that they've decorated their goddess statue with this like, molten metal. <laughs> oh! <laughs> this oh, molten that's cool. metal crown. This is amazing to me. And it's and Makes then, like, sense, this yeah. is this is a house, so it's mostly made of stone. Like, the actual house is made of stone. It's got that that sort of spiky sun symbol. But then it has these decorative painted plates on the front. And then inside, like, this is a Goron bed. How amazing is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a bed of coals. Wow. I'm just going to have lava in my house. Because why not? Heating. And like they Thanks. decorate with rock cairns and metal. And ooh, who are you? It's really, it's really amazing oh. because they managed to to give you a really clear hint of the culture and the kind of people behind uh, a scenario just by the the things and the, the places. Yeah, just by the <laughs> by the look and the architecture and the music, uh, like this yeah. sort of like bouncy. Bum, ba -da, ba -da, bum, bum. It's like heavy, but it's also like fun because the Gorons are like the most carefree. They're like, oh, do it again, brother. <laughs> like they love, they love like stupid meathead challenges. <laughs> there are a couple of shrines that you can only get by you know besting the Gorons at like the game of who can stand in the toughest heat or like <laughs> stuff like that. It's very funny. But this is something I also like, is that you can find, like, in almost every town, you find people from the other races um, <laughs> that have come to, to visit and to trade, specifically. Like, this woman is a... a she's a Gerudo jewelry trader. That's such a great point. 
yeah, they, they are not like the typical isolated cultures that for some reason are next to each other but never move. Yeah. People move. People oh, move cool. and people trade and people go on tourist vacations and there's an inn in every town for <laughs> a reason in this game because you might actually want to stay. And sometimes even in the peak of craziness, people of different cultures marry each other. Yeah, um, and in particular the Gerudo in this game, the way that they self-perpetuate is by marrying other races, although they can't marry the, um, the Gorons. The Gorons seem to be sexless, which is weird. But they're rocks. That's okay. Well. Um, it's just weird. Um, like, like I get it as as somebody who's agender myself. Like, right on, brother. But, um, <laughs> but at the same time, it's very weird. Um, and, and unusual in video games, I must say. So, uh, whoops. I wanted to see how many amber I have. Uh, one shy. Okay. So yeah, so like even here they have like cook pots so that you can cook meals because in this game if you drop something on the ground it will just bake as a solo ingredient but if you use a cook pot it can turn into a, a food item. Like anywhere on Death Mountain I can just... I'll just drop some apples. I'm gonna light on fire. <laughs> They're just on the ground, but they're... Okay, so they're lighting on fire, and now I have baked apples instead of regular apples. <laughs> wow. Whereas... Even your gas bill. With, you know, if I take five apples here and I put them in the cook pot, you get this amazing little cooking thing, which is hilarious. But I come out with simmered fruit. Like, I don't know, I just find that really interesting. And that level of detail in an, you know, a sandbox, in an open world, it's, it's amazing. That's really um, hooking for me in a video game, much more than any extraordinary graphic, you know. Just look at these, like, they have windows that are just, like, little metal frames inside the, inside the rock. And they're hung with those little metal decorations. And like metal and rock and do what you can. Yeah, and they do so much. Like, look, look at that, the, the, the armor shop sign, and then the cutout <laughs> is right there. <laughs> <laughs> wow, great. that level of detail. I it's love amazing. it. I love it so much. Um, okay, where haven't I shown you? I, I, need, to, I need to keep going. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we only, we only have five minutes uh, before okay. I, need to, I need to go, but... Um, yeah, I don't want to help you. Why don't I show you Link's house? Because in this game you can buy a house. That's real. Well, I don't know if that's realistic, but that's cool. I mean, after the calamity, maybe. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> when the when the when the world population is reduced by like two thirds by plague and climate change you know maybe you can afford a house then if they're still standing before banks are reinvented yeah and but um, can you buy properties all around the map or is just that you have the, the headquarters no, house in, in this case there is one specific house that you can buy um, okay and like these are like these are great because these are, um, there's a construction company called Bolson Construction, and these are the type of houses they make. They're not well, the same it. as the houses in the rest of the village, which look like this. Which again, very medieval Europe, right? Like you've got the, the, the s stone and plaster, you've got the, the wood frame and the tile roof, a chimney. These are almost modern. Like these are these are like those those cookie cutter houses that you get when construction companies buy up a whole block. But they're pretty too. This is this is Link's house. Um, I finished building it, but so now it it actually says Link's house. 
in Hylian. That's what those symbols are. That's cool. And can you can have, customize like, all the this stuff. Ooh. I have a little bed, some f some generic photos. Although later you can actually get a photo that Link actually likes. That's like a historical photo for Link. Then you have like a little Korok flower, which I just think is wonderful. Yeah, it's integrating the wall in the place, Link's place. Mm -hmm. Like a little like cooking set and like a table and and books even. Like, it's just very cute. But like the, oh, the this... architecture is all it, like I I keep coming back to like Ireland. Right? <laughs> you have the yeah. the brickwork covered by plaster and like these sort of stone steps that have been there so long that they're mostly moss. A couple little outbuildings in case you want to like stable a horse or something. Your very own apple tree. A shed kind of a that you're not allowed to go in for some reason. Really? <laughs> Sometimes they didn't think of quite everything, but you know, I'll give them a pass. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some mud. I like it's, it's like a compilation of all the elements to make you feel that it's home, you know, the cozy place. Yeah. Yeah. They really like the idea of the wing to modern companies bring, being in buildings that have absolutely nothing to do with the aesthetic of the town just because it's cheaper. That's an amazing point. Yeah, so I'll, I'll show you the town that, that they're building, um, this mm -hmm. construction company. Where is it? I think this will be our, our last visit for today, but... Fair enough. I, I really enjoying the tour. <laughs> I must say. I'm, I'm really enjoying just like running around and talking with you about it, so works out. Actually, I must confess that's the way I really explode um, open walls and sandboxes. I, sometimes I really feel bad that I have to go for missions. I really like just to wander around. Uh, this game rewards you for wandering around. Um, <laughs> So like when I when I started this game, I was like, ooh, plot, and I just kind of like went with it. And you know, I would wander off track every once in a while, but I'd be like, ooh, what's up this mountain? But like my housemate, he started playing, and like they told him, okay, you want to go meet up with Impa and Kakariko, and so he went the exact opposite direction until he ran into plot by accident, and that was fine. Like that was totally chill. Like he also did a playthrough of this game where he only rode horses to get around. He never he never used the uh, the, the fast travel, mm -hmm. which was a really oh. interesting experience to watch. Yeah, and quite off, off rails because yeah, even the design is never thought to do that. So it's like a different experience under the radar. I like it. Um. Well, it's a good idea. I must confess I'm very lazy for not using fast travel, but I like the I, idea to I, that. you know, I get a little bit annoyed not using the fast travel, especially because once you've offended the the Yiga clan, who are basically a bunch of bumbling ninja wannabes who are pro Ganon, mm -hmm. um, they start showing up on the roads and just attacking you, like. Wow. That, that weird red-clad archer that we saw down in the jungle, that was a Yiga. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so here, here is... Here's the town that they're building. Like, this is one of the Bolson construction people. Um, and, interestingly, if you come here before he does, this, this goddess statue is already here. We were there before anyone else. It was there before see. anyone else. And so, like, is that how you picked where to put your town? Because there was a goddess statue there? <laughs> like, it's really quite Ooh. cool. That's but yeah, cool. so you can see these same these same Bolson construction houses going up. Um, like, every place there's a giant boulder right now is eventually going to have one of those. But the thing about, about Terrytown, which is the name of this town in English... Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's apparently named that way because this guy is Hudson, and, and Terrytown in New York is on the Hudson. 
Okay, I just got you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. I don't remember what it is in Japanese. In Japanese, all of the Bolson construction people are named after mushrooms because, like, if you look at his his hair, he he looks like a particular type of mushroom that you get a lot in oh, Japanese okay. food. Wow. Um, I mean, no, it's it's like developers will tell go freak on details and do whatever you want, and uh, the the more the better. It's, yeah. it's quite fascinating the level of. Yeah, not only Easter eggs, but wings and so that is here. I'm sure that you could tell me 1,000 more. Yeah. Um, oh. But this town, specifically as it grows, he asks you to go out to every other race of peoples and bring mm -hmm. in somebody from them. So, so like, first he asked me for this guy to come and break up the boulders. Seems like a guy for the work. Right. And, like, then he asked me... Like, right now, he's asked me to find somebody from the Gerudo who who can come and be a tailor in the village. Because his clothes are wearing out. It's like the separate spirit of bring everyone because we have space and we need people. Mm -hmm. And, like, then after that, he's going to ask me for, um, for a Rito and then a Zora. And then once the town is... Once you have completed the town... Um, then a whole bunch of other Hylians move in. So there's every race on the planet is in this one little town that you helped to make. Which I think is just a, a really nice message for a, a side quest. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and useful positive vision of globalization for a video game, if you trust me. Um, so I'm afraid that is where I'm going to have to to end today's stream. Um, thank you so much for joining me. This has really been a blast, David. And uh, thank you to to chat and anyone following along. Um, it's been great doing Breath of the Wild with you this last month. And next month, not next week, I'm taking next week off. But uh, starting on the 14th, I'll be streaming Tears of the Kingdom, the whole new set of guests. So I hope you will come back and join us then. And uh, I look forward to seeing you. Bye. Thank you so much. Goodbye.